This is the Moza Mini P. It's a camera stabilizer or gimbal that works not only with the GoPro Hero 9, but also with certain mirrorless cameras and also with smartphones. For that reason, among many others, this has become our main gimbal for shooting vlogs. So in this video, I'll give you more details about this gimbal and what makes it so great for vlogging. So by far the number one most attractive feature of this gimbal is its maximum payload of 900 grams or 1.98 pounds. This is really attractive because if you look at other gimbals on the market, and there are quite a few of them, many of those gimbals are specific to smartphones or specific to GoPros or specific to mirrorless cameras. Now admittedly, the ones that are specific to mirrorless cameras, you could also you know, put a GoPro or a smartphone on those gimbals as well, but those gimbals are also really big and really expensive, so they come at a higher cost. And this is where the Moza Mini P's two main other features really come into play. Number one, this gimbal can actually be folded in half. So you can fit it inside of a relatively small or medium sized camera bag. For me, that's my Think Tank Turnstyle 10 bag, or even certain purses if you have a you know, medium sized purse. And number two is the price. The Moza Mini P comes in at 200 US dollars. If you go for a larger gimbal, oftentimes those gimbals are gonna run you at least double the price. And if you go for a specific gimbal that is more for GoPros or smartphones, then they're often gonna cost you, you know, around $100, and those gimbals are specific to certain camera models. So if you're gonna pay you know, a couple hundred dollars for a gimbal, you might as well get one that can work across multiple cameras. And that's what really makes this gimbal so future-proof. In terms of GoPro gimbals in particular, it's really difficult to find a gimbal that can work with the latest GoPro Hero 8 or Hero 9. For the GoPro Hero 9 in particular, I really can't think of a good gimbal on the market right now. So that's one of the many reasons why the Mose Mini P has been our go-to gimbal especially if we're using a GoPro. The other nice thing about this gimbal's payload and being able to handle bigger cameras such as the Fujifilm is that it can handle not only the GoPro by itself, but also the GoPro Plus accessories. For us, we often vlog, or actually we always vlog, with our GoPro and the Media Mod. Definitely one of the best parts about this gimbal is that you can use the GoPro as well as the Media Mod and even attach an external microphone to the Media Mod and still be able to use it with your gimbal. So that's really excellent for vlogging and keeping a really steady frame as you're walking, even if you're using another lens such as the wide-angle lens and you know, you're not linear so that you're not cropping into your frame, you can actually vlog really well with this gimbal and the GoPro together. Now even though the GoPro is our main vlogging camera that we use to film maybe 75% of our vlogs, the rest of our vlog footage is captured using at least two other cameras, sometimes three or even four. So the second camera that we use a lot to vlog are the Fujifilm X-T3 and X-H1. We often use the 18-55 to kit lens, which is just a nice low profile and super lightweight lens that also captures really high quality photos and videos. So whenever we need a little bit of extra zoom or more cinematic footage that the GoPro can't capture, then we turn to the Fuji films. And that's also really key because you don't want just GoPro footage in your vlogs. It's as much as possible, you really wanna vary the type of visual media that your audience is looking at because it just makes it more visually appealing and makes it more likely that your audience retention on your vlogs is gonna be longer. The only thing about using mirrorless cameras is that they often can't give you the most stable footage if you're shooting handheld. Even the ones that have IBIS or built-in stabilization, such as X-H1, your footage will be that much more stable and cinematic if you can put a camera like this on a gimbal. And that's when it's really nice that the Mose Mini P has such a high maximum payload because if I want to swap out the GoPro and put the X-H1 with the 18-55 lens on this gimbal, I can do that. I can do the same with my Fujifilm X-T3 and the 18-55 kit lens and even my Sony A7R 3 But you do have to be really careful about which lenses you pair with your mirrorless camera bodies because there is still a max payload of 900 grams or one. 
0.98 pounds, which means that you can't use the heaviest camera combination on this gimbal. I'll leave a link below to the compatibility list of all the mirrorless cameras and lens combinations that will work with this gimbal. The third camera that we use a lot when we're filming vlogs is a smartphone. We use a smartphone more than you might think, just because we always have our smartphone with us and in a pinch, it works really well for shooting vlogs, as long as you have enough lighting. But speaking of lighting, the GoPro really still sucks in low lighting. And in comparison, the phone is actually a better option whenever we're shooting indoors or after dark. So in those cases and other times when we just don't have our GoPro with us, we often pull out our phones to fill in the gaps. But phones too, if you want the most stable footage out of a cell phone camera, no matter how good your camera is, it's still better to put your cell phone on a gimbal. The Moza Mini P even comes with a smartphone mount adapter, so you can easily attach a smartphone of just about any size to this gimbal. Another reason why we shoot a lot with our cell phones is to get behind the scenes shots for social media, such as Instagram stories or TikTok. On both of those platforms, you oftentimes are better off if you're shooting vertical video. And that's another great feature about this gimbal. You can pretty easily change the orientation of your camera from shooting horizontal to vertical video. And that function works no matter what kind of camera you're using. And one more thing about using cell phones and gimbals, sometimes with cell phones, I wanna use my Moment lenses. In particular, I really like the Moment fisheye lens and the Moment anamorphic lens. These are two lens types that smartphone built-in lenses have not been able to replicate. When I add on these lenses, that adds more weight to my phone, and thanks to the Moza Mini P, I can still use my phone with Moment lenses and still get stable footage. Pretty much all other cell phone gimbals would not be able to handle the extra weight of these Moment lenses, and you'd have to add a counterbalance. But that's not the case with the Moza Mini P. So that really extends the type of shots that I can get when I'm shooting with my cell phone and this gimbal. The fourth camera that we might pull out of our arsenal when we're vlogging is the Insta360 ONE R. Just because this action camera is able to offer the one inch sensor, which is really great for shooting in low lighting, or we can swap it out and shoot 360. And so the nice thing about this camera is that despite its different size and shape and weight, we can swap this out with the GoPro and the Moza Mini P can handle it just fine. So at least four of these very different cameras can fit and be stabilized with the Moza Mini P. And that's really the main reason why this gimbal has been with us and been our main vlogging stabilizer. That plus the fact that it can fold in half and doesn't take up a lot of space in my bag whether I use this gimbal or not. Now even though the Moza Mini P can support and stabilize all of these cameras, can the gimbal connect to the camera and act as a sort of remote control for your camera to start and stop recording? That really depends on what kind of camera you're using. In general, that feature does work with most mirrorless cameras, but again, you have to check that compatibility list below. And in pretty much every scenario, you have to have a special cable that connects your camera to the gimbal, and that does not come with the gimbal, so you have to order that separately. But in the case of my Sony and Fujifilm, I am able to connect those cameras to the gimbal and use the buttons here as a sort of remote control for my cameras. For action cameras such as the GoPro, the Insta360 ONE R, and the DJI Osmo Action, unfortunately you cannot connect those cameras to the gimbal. I get this question a lot for GoPros in particular, and some people get really upset that you can't connect the GoPro to the gimbal and you know start and stop recording. But to be fair, in my research, the only gimbal I've seen on the market that is able to do that is the GoPro Karma Grip. The only problem is that gimbal only works with the GoPro Hero 7 and under. It doesn't work with the GoPro Hero 8 and the Hero 9. However, a lot of the newer GoPros now have voice commands and you can even use something like the GoPro Remote. And with the remote, you can even change certain settings. So there is a sort of workaround, but you're not going to be able to use the buttons on the gimbal to directly control your GoPro. So there are a couple more things worth mentioning about this gimbal. Number one are the various different modes that you can use when you're shooting with the gimbal, such as FPV mode, inception mode, and sports mode. 
Those are all really handy for changing how the gimbal follows your subject or moves around as you're filming. And you can use all of those modes with every single one of these different cameras. The nice thing too about those modes is that they can really only be achieved with a gimbal. They're very hard to do if you're shooting on a tripod or shooting handheld. Along those lines, another thing that you can really only do with a gimbal or something like a gimbal is a motion time-lapse. And the Moza Mini P does those really well if you connect the Moza Mini P to the Moza Master phone app. Time-lapses in general are one of our favorite ways to convey the passage of time. So motion time-lapses are another reason why we use our gimbals a lot across all of our different cameras. The final thing worth mentioning is the battery life. This gimbal has an internal battery that can be charged via USB-C and the battery life is 20 hours. And now you're probably wondering how good is the image stabilization when you're shooting with this gimbal? I would say that on smaller cameras such as the GoPro, the Insta360, and the smartphone, the image stabilization is really, really good. And that really comes down to the size of the gimbal. It's comparable to GoPro gimbals and smartphone gimbals, so it's really no surprise that it's able to handle smaller cameras extremely well. In terms of mirrorless cameras, it really depends on how heavy your camera setup is. Even though this gimbal has a pretty respectable maximum payload, the closer you get to that payload, the more the gimbal it's not terrible, but it's not the best, most stable footage that I've ever seen. And one of the reasons is that when it comes to gimbals, you still get what you pay for. And so for larger mirrorless camera setups or camera setups in general that are bigger, then you really have to go for a larger and often more expensive gimbal if you want the most stable footage possible. So with that in mind, who is the Moza Mini P for? I would say that if you're like us and you use a smaller action camera like the GoPro or a smartphone for the majority of your shooting and you occasionally use a mirrorless camera on your gimbal, then that's absolutely the best scenario. And the Moza Mini P will be one of the best gimbals for you especially if you're a run and gun travel shooter like we are. However, if you primarily shoot with a medium size or a larger camera, such as a mirrorless camera or DSLR or cinema camera, then you might as well go for a bigger gimbal. And yes, it will be larger and cost you more money, but the stability will be a lot better. In closing, let's talk about the competition. I think the main competition facing the Moza Mini P right now is the Juwin Crane M2. The Juwin Crane M2 also costs $200 like the Moza Mini P does, but it has a slightly lower maximum payload. The battery life is lower, it's only seven hours, and it doesn't fold in half, so it's harder to transport. So if you're torn between that Juwin or the Moza Mini P, I would go with the Moza Mini P. I think you get more bang for your buck that way. But now I'd love to turn it over to you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this gimbal, if you use a gimbal at all when you're vlogging, and what kind of camera you tend to use it with. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.